welcome, folks. I am Matt. This is Photo Syntech. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Industry. Today, we're talking mycorrhizae with Ari from Dino Myco. Ari, thank you so much for joining us, sir. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much for inviting me, and it's a pleasure to be virtually with you as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the you know, internet. Uh, it's fantastic to be able to connect up like this. You know, I know we've been talking about this for a little while, so certainly happy to uh, finally have you on the show and talk to you about this wonderful product that I love promoting just because I use it in my garden and have seen tremendous results. I mean, the first time I used it, it it actually screwed up my schedule because the plants grew so well. And it, worst problems to have, right? So that being <laughs> May those be your problem. Yeah. yeah. May, those, may those be your only problems you ever have. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Too much growth. It's, so it, 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 is a common, it is a common feedback that we are getting that, you know, the plants are growing a lot faster than what growers had expected. And they have to change up, you know. You know, put them into flower earlier or get a bigger tent or so yeah some implications with growing with dynamite so. yeah <laughs> be prepared for uh, explosive results anyway exactly all right what is mycorrhizae for those who don't know break it down for me cool so uh mycorrhizae is basically a symbiotic relationship between plants and fungi. Myco means uh, fungus and rhiza means root. And together it's a micro it's a fungus root, right? And basically mycorrhizal fungi, the way uh, that plants evolve is they came from aquatic um, environments and moved onto terrestrial uh, lands. And they did not have any root systems uh, when they, when they made that, move and they relied solely on these fungi to be able to absorb nutrients and water and minerals for them oh. and it was such a successful relationship that you know it's been going on for about 400 million years if not more so uh, you know even though plants have developed these root structures and and root systems they still rely on fungi to pull in different nutrients which the plants can't access and it's a way for uh, trees and plants to communicate amongst themselves. They use the fungus to communicate uh, amongst themselves. So it's very, very, very fascinating. And different trees from different families and different plants can communicate through this hyphal network. Uh, so basically, this mycorrhizal fungi, there are five different types of mycorrhizal fungi. Okay. There are endomycorrhizal fungi, there are ectomycorrhizal fungi, there are orchid mycorrhizal fungi, there are ericoid mycorrhizal fungi. And each one of these fungi, they will either associate with specific plants or with a wide array, uh, array of plants, and they'll perform different functions for uh, the plants. Now, they, they don't do it altruistically. They do gain from it, and the plants gain from it as well. So... Um, that's in a nutshell what mycorrhiza is. It's a, it's a symbiotic relationship between a plant and a fungus, and it's a mutualistic symbiotic relationship, which is key. Um, so the plants benefit from it and the fungus benefits from it as well. And so long as this balance, uh, you know, we remain in this checks and balance, so to speak, where the fungus is enjoying and the plant is enjoying, we have a happy, happy party in the soil. And then happy, happy plants on top. Make make happy, happy growers, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Are and you, we're, uh, we're all about smiles. You know it. You know it. Now, with with mycorrhizae, there's, there's different strains of it, and different strains work better with different plants. What does dynomyco use? So, like I said, we, we touched up on that. Um, the different families associate with di different types of plants. So ectomycorrhizal fungi will associate with trees and hardwoods. Okay. Uh, so if you're growing leafy greens or vegetables or, you know, um, house plants, not, you know, they won't benefit from an ectomycorrhizal fungi. Right. Um, endomycorrhizal fungi um, are what we use, and we use specific ones. We use Glomus intraradices. And we have Glomus Masse. So in Canada, we have a product which only has Glomus intraradices. And in the rest of the world, we have two species, um, one which is Glomus intraradices and the other one which is Glomus Masse. Both are endomycorrhizal fungi. And what's fascinating with these fungi and with the plants is that the 
fungus will literally penetrate into the plant, into the root, and it'll go into the cell of the plant root, okay? So that's where it's going to start branching out from. So it's literally living inside of the plant and outside of the plant as well. And outside of the plant, it's secreting enzymes, breaking down unavailable nutrients to the plant, pulling them in. And then once it transfers them into the plant itself, that's where the exchange between the fungus and the plant happens. So the fungus is going to be getting uh, sugars and carbohydrates from the photosynthesis, which the plant does. It's going to pull them down to uh, the roots. And in exchange for that, the fungus is going to give up some nutrients and water and anything else that the plant may need. It's just fascinating, uh, the science behind it. And let's talk a little bit about that in the sense that that's where Dynomyco came from as a company, was you guys are very science-based. Exactly. That's, you know, I think that if you're going to introduce a product to a market, you know, you should be backed by science. <laughs> I think. Oh, makes oh, sense, absolutely. You know? <laughs> absolutely. So, so tell yeah. me uh, how Dynomyco came to be as a company and where the science really started. So, uh, so the main uh, strain of fungi that we use, uh, we, we use the species as Glomus intraradices, and then the substrain is uh, a strain that was isolated in Israel about 32 years ago, close to the Dead Sea region. Okay. Um, so it comes from, uh, the fungus comes from literally the saltiest place in the world. So about 32 years ago, you know, the scientists, um, we, we spun out of, a um an agricultural research organization so it's an israeli government-backed organization that's where all the research not all the research but you know all the government research is done in this um, facility and you know a few of these scientists went out and questioned how is it possible that we have plants living in this very very salty area that doesn't get any water or gets very you know very extreme high temperatures There's something going on it, yeah Nothing's going on, right? So, so they basically were able to isolate this fungus and they started reproducing it and cultivating and growing it. They haven't changed. It's not genetically modified or anything like that, but they've just been, they figured out a way to produce it. And once they figured out a way to produce it, they wanted to see uh, how it affects plants in the real world, right? Or not in the real world, but in, in, a, in a laboratory setting and then in, in, you know, research and trials and all that stuff. So um, basically... Our company was founded seven years ago, but before that, there was a 25 years of research and development with this fungus okay. uh, that span, spanned across, you know, lots of different types of um, agricultural uh, growing protocols and lots of different plants and lots of different growing scenarios. And each time, you know, they, they saw what the effects of the fungus were, how it impacted the health uh, of the plants, how it affected nutrient uptake, water uptake, uh, all that stuff. And then about seven, eight years ago, so our company was founded seven years ago. So eight, nine years ago, just about um, one of the guys who worked at the lab and was able to really advance the way that they produce the fungus um, was approached by another one of our co-founders who heard him at a, a, a lecture that he was gave on mycorrhizal fungi at a dinner. And he just walked up to him and said, hey, do you want to start up a company with this? <laughs> and so, <laughs> so uh, basically, you know, we, we took the, 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 the person who was headed, who had headed the lab and he was tired of just doing research on it. And, you know, he saw the benefits of it. He's like, why don't we just make this into a real product and spread it around the world and get people to grow with it. Right. And it took a few pieces to bring that together. And so our company was founded out of that lab. We have an exclusive global license to sell the fungi, um, which were uh, what was researched and developed in the Volcani Center. And over the last seven years, we've just been improving our methods of production. We've been doing a lot of trials and research on our own, trying to figure out, you know, uh, concentrations and strengths and application rates and all that stuff. And, you know, we did about two year, uh, a year, um, year and a half of trials before we actually launched Dynomyco. So we were doing a lot of, uh, 
of trials and R and D stuff with, with growers from the U S from Israel, uh, from Canada as well. And once we were comfortable, once, you know, we got those amazing feedbacks and, you know, seeing those uh, yield results, that's when we're like, okay, we're, we're ready to launch. It's and it's been, time, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's go time. So a- April uh, 2019 was go time for us. And uh, since then, we've expanded our um, customer base, obviously. And we're now in, we're sold in the USA nationwide. We're sold in Canada nationwide. We're sold in the UK. We're sold in Israel. And two weeks ago, uh, we started selling in Chile as well. So in South Very America cool. as well. Very so- cool. Yeah, so it's it's been a fun ride to see. You know, we have our our uh, store locator on the you know on our website. It's it's you know it was a few dots here and there, and then all of a sudden it's like you know starting starting to to pop up everywhere. So it's really cool to yeah. you know the fungal network is spreading. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That yeah. is awesome. That's awesome. And you guys deserve the success with the product that you're putting out. Let's say I walk into the grow shop and sitting there on the shelf is. Well, some Dynomyco and then some Great White, which I know a lot of people are familiar with. Why would I pick up the Dynomyco? Great question. Uh, both are phenomenal products. Uh, Great White's been around for many, many years. And, you know, I don't think that there's any room for a bad product to be on the shelf and to be, you know. That's a good way to look at to it. Be able to, now, you have to be doing something right if you're on the shelf for as long as they are. So kudos to Great White for that uh, product. I think that what separates us from from Great White is, like I said, the specificity of the fungal strains and species that we use. Um, Great White is more of an overall inoculant. It has many, many uh, ingredients inside it, whereas we're a pure endomycorrhizal fungus inoculant. So we don't have any other active ingredients in our products. So right. it's literally the fungi and the carrier, and that's it. So. What's doing all the magic is the high concentration and of, of the fungi that we have in our products. And that's what sets us apart uh, between us and Great White. So Great White has a more diverse microbial population where it's bacteria and fungi and trichoderma. And there's a few other active ingredients in there, um, at plant food sources. Whereas with us, you know, we're only mycorrhizal fungi. That's it. So, um, big difference in, in that sense, right? So you have uh, one one ingredient or two ingredients which are doing all the work, whereas with Great White, you have lots of ingredients that are doing all the work. Uh, and, and it would depend on what type of plant you want to grow, right? So if you're growing, um, you know, a tree, it would it, it could probably make more sense to pick up, you know, Great White because you want ectomycorrhizal fungi. But if you're growing leafy greens or vegetables, it, it would probably make more sense to pick up Dynomyco because it has a higher concentration of those endomycorrhizal fungi, and those are what's going to associate with your um, with your annual plants. Gotcha. And as I found from my own personal experience, the medical type of flowering plant also benefits extremely well from from the Dynomyco product. It's I, it's, it's all I well. use, man. <laughs> Yeah, so, extremely, anyway. extremely well, more, um, uh, you know, there, there are trials, uh, there's been research done where, you know, they'll inoculate uh, plants that produce, you know, essential oils with Glomus enterotices and Glomus mase, and those plants will yield more essential oils. So, you know, if you're growing medical herbs, and, and you want those, you know, uh, those essential oils and all that fun stuff. You know, you can, you definitely know where I'm going with that. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. Hey, and the proof is there. I, I just, I can't yeah. say that enough. The proof is there. So are there ways from, you know, aside from tilling and getting in and digging up the soil to, to hurt the mycorrhizae once it's in there and established itself? So tilling would definitely be a way to, uh, to, to break that, that hyphal network apart. And it's, it's amazing because they are, you know, there's, they're thinner, they're smaller than, you know, a strand of hair and the moment you just move that soil you've broken up that hyphal network so that connection between you know where that fungus is pulling in nutrients to the plant the moment you move that it's gonna have to spread out again and then you know access that again for the plant um there are ways to kill the fungi most you know logically speaking would be a fungicide 
Uh, not all fungicides kill the not all fungicides kill the fungus though. Okay. Uh, you need a system. You need systemic fungicides to to kill the fungi mostly, but you know fungicides will will do damage. Um, pH levels can kill the fungi as well, but you'd most likely be killing your plant before you killed the fungi. So yeah, the, the results um, would be up top and down below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you would most likely see the results up top before you would even notice anything going on at the bottom. Um, you know, like I said, the fungi that we use is very vigorous. It's, you know, dealt with heat and salinity and all that stuff for, for millions and millions of years. Um, so it's very, very tolerant of that. Um, there are times when a, you know, that mycorrhizal symbiosis won't happen. And that can, um, it, it's not to say that the fungus, you're killing the fungus, but it's more that the plant is not benefiting or won't get anything out of having a relationship with the fungus. So it won't even go for it. And that happens mostly when there's uh, a lot of available phosphorus in the ground. Okay. And so basically um, imagine you're in a five-star hotel, right? You're lounging, you're chilling, you're having a good time. <laughs> and I tell you, Hey, you, do you want anything else? You know, you can, nah, I'm, I'm good. I'm, you know, I'm comfortable. Right, right. I got everything. So imagine that five-star hotel being the most incredible living soil you have ever, you know, come across in your life, right? It's got everything in there for the plant. It doesn't need anything really. But on the other hand, imagine now you're in a one-star hotel, right? And the walls are chipping and, and it smells of mold and all that stuff. And then, you know, do you want anything else? Absolutely. I want a new room. I want this, you know, lots of different stuff. And so the poorer the, that hotel is, so to speak, the poorer the room is, um, you, can, you can kind of, you know, associate that with the poorer the soil is and the more of an effect the mycorrhizal fungi will have and a more of an impact it'll have on your plants. So um, we tend to see better results in poorer soil, right? Not, not necessarily better results in the sense that the growers are, better, are growing more much, More room better to improve. Plants. Exactly. It'll, it'll bring out a lot more expression in the plant that you wouldn't have gotten okay. had you not inoculated the plant, right? Whereas if you're in a very rich soil, great conditions, the fungus is not going to impact the grow as much as it would in a poor uh, scenario, so to speak. There you go. So a healthy system will benefit from it, but a poor system will really, really benefit from it. But definitely no reason to not use it. I, I always say you'd be a fool not to grow with dynamica. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like my my, my uh, we, we can't we coined the term recently. You'd be loco to grow without dynamica, right? You know, so you, <laughs> well, like you after, after you've after, after you've tried it a few times, you know, or you've done one run with it. I honestly think you know, and I'm biased, obviously, because you know I work for the company. But if you read some of the comments and the feedback that we get, and I got literally just on my phone moments ago, I can pull it up on my cell phone even if you want. But, you know, everybody who's tried, I tried it, I loved it, I want more. I tried it, I loved it. Where, where can I get it? Now someone, you know, picked this up, said, I want to start distributing you in Spain. I picked it up last year at Emerald Cup. And yeah, so, yeah. you know, I, I honestly think that, you know, if you try us out, there's, you know, it's either yes, you're going to grow with us or no, you're going to grow you know, but I definitely think it's, you know, it's, it's, yes, I'm going to grow with Dynamica. Yeah. I think one of my favorite experiences was talking to somebody about the product and they said, well, should I do a comparison, grow one plant with one without? And I go, why limit yourself? Excuse me. Just, just grow with it, man. It, it works. You know, you're going to see big results. When's well, the best I, time? I, oh, go ahead. No, I, I, I like the idea of the comparisons because then they really know, you know, what true, they were missing true. out on. But on the other hand, I kind of feel bad for that grower who put it on only one plant and the rest he didn't do any. Then he sees, you know, such massive differences and he, you know, yeah. he hits himself over the head. Why what didn't I add it to all my plants? Yeah. So yeah. I'm all for the scientific approach and, and do your side by side comparisons. But I will say this we have done that for 32 years already, side by side comparisons and large scale trials. So you would not have to do that so exactly you know, you can, trust in the science yeah 
Exactly. Trust in the science, trust in, in the company. And we've put a lot, a lot of time and effort into making sure that, you know, we're a product backed by, by science. And we've done all the, the footwork in order to say, you know, trust us. We know it'll work. You know, and the other thing, what, what's tough, it is a biological product. So there are sometimes, you know, outliers and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, 99% of the time, we're going to see fantastic results. Great. So if somebody wanted to see the science behind it, would you be willing to share? Do you have stuff that you can send out to people? Uh, yeah, we have, you know, all our all of our uh, brochures and inserts have, you know, the trial results that we've done. Not all of them, but, you know, key uh, key trial results that we've done. It's on our website. Um, we were featured in a, in a few article magazine, uh, article magazines. We were featured in another website, which is Israel Agri. So it has everything to do with Israeli agriculture. And there was one thing which, uh, um, you know, so we had, we had an article over there. So there's, there's, there's lots of science and, and articles. And if you go into Google scholar and look up mycorrhizal fungi, you know, it'll, it'll just keep on coming up and coming up. Um, so yeah, you can, you know, feel free, reach out. We'll gladly send you information or direct you to, you know, the, the sources you're looking for. Awesome. And that was a bit of a leading question because you did send me the package there of information. <laughs> and it was just awesome to read through. Now with those pre-mixed uh, mycorrhizal mediums, uh, like the ProMix, HP and whatnot, is that as effective as, say, adding it directly to the roots at the time of planting, or is it just all good? I mean, what works best? Great question. Um, so there is no standard or set limit or minimum to what makes a mycorrhizal inoculant. What makes a product uh you know, allowed what makes a company allowed to write mycorrhiza on their product labeling. There's no, there's no set standard. So it's enough to have a single propagule in a gram or in the bag even to be able to, you know, write mycorrhiza on it. Right. Um, so, you know, the question is, what are you getting from the product from the growing media now here's the thing with growing medias there's all there's a certain price point to enter at the growing media you know so there's only so much you as a grower are going to pay for a soil right if you add a lot of mycorrhizae uh, mycorrhizal propagules into your product you're gonna have to bump that price up in order for the mycorrhizal fungi to be significant and make such an impact you're going to have ah, to yes. bump up the numbers that you have in your soil so that's the first thing so that changes your price point the the second thing that happens is in the way that soil is handled it's different than a product which is going into the store and remaining on the shelf right so with the soil a lot of times you'll get to a growth uh, shop and that's the, that soil will either be laying outside in the sun or laying outside in the cold. And, and, and that abiotic stress can affect the concentrations in the uh, growing media. Which makes sense, of course. So, yeah. So basically, even if it says, and this is my opinion, even if it says that it has mycorrhiza on the bag and on the label, flip that label over and see what the ingredients are. Check out how many active propagules there are, how many active spores there are. And you'll see that there is a very big difference between what you get in a soil mix compared to what you'll get on a bag of dynamica. And once you see that difference, you'll be like, hmm, okay, now I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so in my opinion, it's always best to inoculate that soil. And we even have growers, large, uh, large scale facilities that are growing in living soils and they haven't. They haven't thrown out their soil in, I think, six years, but they add dynamico every single time they transplant just to make sure that that plant gets established, right? So even though they have fungi, which are in that soil already, you know, they still add uh, our product into it just to make sure that once that plant gets into that soil, you know, it makes that connection with the roots right away. Uh, the fungus makes that connection with the roots right away. And it'll reduce that transplant shock and it'll allow the plant to pull up more nutrients right away. Um, and the other thing is, grow, you know, other growing media, 
such as cocoa, which does not have any mycorrhizal fungi whatsoever because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't even come from the soil. Right. Uh, so you definitely want to add into that growing medium. So uh, my opinion is even in the most super, super soil that you have, the most living soil you can possibly uh, put your hands on, I do recommend adding, you know, uh, a little bit of our product. And a little bit does go a long way um, because it's such a high concentration of uh, propagules. So you would add a little bit, but you know, you'll, you'll definitely be able to see the differences with it. Totally. It's only been working for 400 million years. So I mean, why not? You know? yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm the organic guy. I, I'm, I'm all about that. But for the, the synthetic grower, uh, you, you kind of hit that salt thing a few times talking about dino specifically works well in a synthetic environment that is soil based. Of course, hydro based, it's going to be different, but. Yeah. Fantastic. So all, all the trials that we did are actually with, you know, salt based mineral based uh, oh, fertilizers okay. in large scale. Facilities. Yeah. So, you know, the moment you, the moment you can prove, you know, that you're getting 20, 30, 40% increases in a synthetic, um, you know, environment, so to speak, you know, that, that puts a lot of the doubters, you know, it quite quietens them up a bit because, you know, a lot, a lot of the feedback, a lot of the comments that we always get is like, oh, mycorrhizal fungi don't do anything uh, in synthetic uh, fertilizers. So, you know, go back and read our trials and, you know, every one of these facilities was growing with, you know, synthetic, you know, salt-based fertilizers or mineral-based fertilizers. So absolutely, you know, if you're in a synthetic uh, environment. Look, plants evolved with these organisms. They did not evolve with someone coming and pouring in liquid fertilizers, right? Yeah. They evolved with this this soil food web with with bacteria feeding on, you know, uh, the the dead fungi and the and and the worms eating the dead fungi and the 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 bacteria then dying and the you know all, all that complete intricate you know soil food web. And, you know, we're just, we're just bringing back, you know, what, what nature had been doing for 400 million years, you know, <laughs> that's what we're doing. Well, now you guys just need Justin Timberlake to sing the bringing nature back. So I can go somewhere with I'm that. I'm bringing nature back. There you go. Yep. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm, I'm running a no-till system. My plants have finished growing. I've cut them out. I've let that root mass kind of die out. But what happens to the mycorrhiza inside the soil? It's still alive until I put something else in there? It would go dormant or it would, you know, die out depending on the conditions. Um, so th the fungi need a, in order to live, they need a host plant because that's the way they survive, right? Okay. They need those sugars. Uh, they need those sugars from the plant in order to, to sustain their life. So a lot of times if you cut that plant and, you know, pull it out, you're going to pull out all those hyphae from, you know, from that system, you're going to pull out those roots. You're not going to leave a lot of room for that fungus to live. Uh, companion planting is a great way to keep the fungi alive and going. Um, like I said, we do have growers who are in living soils. And like, like I said, they haven't changed their soil in six years. They build it up year after year. They're still adding the fungi just for that initial phase so that, you know, because that hyphal network can be all over the soil and you want to make sure that it's, you know, very close to the root when, when you inoculate or when you transplant it to reduce that transplant shock and get it going. So, like I said, uh, you know, companion planting is a great way to keep that fungi alive when you, you know, you've harvested, leave that you can leave that root in and you can plant directly next to it, you know, just poke a hole, pour some product in and stick your, you know, your new, your, your clone, or your seed, your seed, seedling, whatever it is, and you're good to go. Right but yeah, the, the, the biotic, uh, the abiotic stressors can be, you know, a factor. And, you know, the fact that you don't have another plant there could, you know, right, could right. kill and it off. They, of course, you know, that's the thing. It, it needs that, that relationship then. What if I've got that existing network, it's been kept alive by, say, my cover crop, and when I plant, do, do the two networks join up? Does it become one system then? If it's the, if it's the same fungus, then, then it will and it could. Um, and that could connect between, you know, your 
cover crops and your uh, your your main plant, which is what you're growing. So they can definitely start interacting one with one with the other uh, in that scenario. Absolutely, hooking yeah. up to an existing system. Just turn on the floodgates. Too cool. Happy, happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you you gotta love it. All right, last point. Is there anything bad about using mycorrhizae? Any detractors or a time when I wouldn't want to? You might become addicted to using it, and you may never plant <laughs> without it again. Uh, yeah, I can attest to that. Yeah, we always say, uh, you know, to anybody who starts growing with dynamite, we say you'll never grow without it again. Yeah. Well, I can, I can certainly believe that. And it's just <laughs> awesome right across the garden. You know, I'm, I'm using it everywhere that uh, I've got a plant growing. So, yeah, so how the, many, uh, oh, go ahead. No, there, there are no, you know, downsides to, to using mycorrhizal fungi. It, eventually what it can lead to is it can lead to a reduction in your fertilizer usage and your water usage because the plants will be able to pull in more nutrients and more water. Um, it can reduce your veg time so you can go into flowering a lot faster so you know you might shave a week off of of, of your grow i don't know if that's detrimental or not but uh <laughs> you might have a week to just chill you know hey, no, never a bad thing right especially as busy as we are nowadays exactly. all right all right where do we find you online if uh, we want to find out more about dynamico D-Y-N-O-M-Y-C-O, Dynamico, uh, across the board, whether, yep, that's it, that's it. So whether you're on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, YouTube, Dynamico, simple as that, you know, where we, we have a nice online uh, presence as well. We're distributed, like I said, in uh, several countries around the world, glowing, uh, growing every day and uh becoming a global, you know, a global brand, which is super exciting. And yeah, feel free to reach out, you know, anytime and all the time, whenever you want, we'll do our absolute best to, to respond as quickly as possible. And we're all about producing the greatest mycorrhizal fungi on the planet and also providing every single grower with the greatest customer experience and customer satisfaction. So if either one of those are not met by us, by me and the team, let me know so we can improve. Um, but we will gladly, you know, if you have any question whatsoever, you know, we have a customer support section where you know, our, our guys in the lab are answering questions and pretty much anything you want to know, if we can answer it, we'll gladly do that. We won't tell you how we produce our fungi because that's our trade secret. And that's why we're able to get to such high concentrations. And I've had other um, company uh, reps and company owners walk up to us at trade show and like, how do you get those numbers? You know, <laughs> can't <laughs> tell you that. <laughs> right, you know, on, that's right on. And that's you know what? Secret. I think one of my yeah. favorite parts about it overall too is the price. It, this stuff is not expensive, guys. So if you're not using it in your garden, you're just holding yourself back. Simply put. You're holding yourself back. Why not get bigger plants? All right. Exactly. Been a pleasure having you here today, and I'm sure the viewers would agree. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, I will touch up a last thing on that price point. Um, we made it, we priced it so that, you know, even a small scale home grower with one plant in the closet or a very large scale facility with thousands of plants. Um, It'll be financially feasible and it'll make a lot of sense to add it. So basically, if you just grew one additional one additional fruit or one additional flower or whatever it is, it's already paid for itself and you've probably reaped the rewards of, you know, of uh, bringing, you know, bringing that ROI home, so to speak. So it's definitely at a price point where everybody can, can enjoy it. And, you know, mycorrhiza for the masses. That's what we're all about. Spread spores, not wars. <laughs> hey, man, I can get on board with that. Ari, it's been a blast, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank all you. Right. Look forward to seeing you soon. All right.